In the fallout from Downing Street's party gate, Bury South MP Christian Wakeford has defected to Labour from the Conservatives. It was an explosive moment in Westminster that took almost everyone by surprise, and that included his mate and fellow Tory MP, Andrew Bowie. Hearing Christian Wakeford, the Berry MP, is defecting to the Labour Party just as Prime Minister leaves number 10 for PMQs. Well, that is quite incredible. We saw Christian Wakeford there as the list uh, of seven, one of them calling for him to go. Defecting to the Labour Party. I mean, the first I've learned about this is that tweet uh, from well, Laura. That, uh, we've all, there. that's the first um, we've all heard. Uh, Christian is a very good friend of mine, an excellent MP, and I would be surprised if the to say the least, if that was the case. So you don't um, think that's true? I, mean, I, in, I, in, don't, in, I, I, I haven't spoken to Christian no. today. I couldn't say categorically, but I well, would be very surprised if Christian was about to jump ship to the Labour Party right now. Right. Why? Because he's a solid Conservative who's determined to carry on representing his constituents within the Conservative Party. The last, certainly the last time I spoke to him, that was the case. Um, but I, I would have to speak to I Christian. Mean, that was all painfully awkward for Andrew Bowie, who might come to regret saying Wakeford is a solid Conservative, clearly not solid enough to stay in the Conservative Party. But who is Labour's newest MP and is he, at heart, a true blue Tory? Well, unsurprisingly, as a Tory MP until today, Wakeford has a very right-wing voting record. He voted with the Tory whip to remove the right of unaccompanied children seeking asylum to join legally resident family members in the UK. And he voted for the £20 cut to universal credit for the police and crime bill and for the nationality and borders bill. Like any good Tory, he also seems to hate the Labour Party. These WhatsApp messages, Christian Wakeford says, Labour, bunch of the C word. I'm not going to say that out loud, but you can read it for yourselves. And we have another. So here he's quote tweeting Sarah Brickcliffe. And she says, Angela Rayner tipped to shadow Chancellor for the Duchy of Lancaster, shadowing Michael Gove. And Christian Wakeford says, F me, that will be one to watch for the giggles. So I wonder how she's feeling about the newest member of the Labour Party. Nonetheless, despite that voting record, despite those uh, attitudes you've seen there expressed in those WhatsApp messages, Starmer has welcomed Wakeford with open arms. Dahlia, from the perspective of Keir Starmer, was this the right thing to do? We are in quite risky territory here because what does it say about the Labour Party that... Jeremy Corbyn and countless other Labour activists have been suspended or expelled or told that they're not welcome in the Labour Party because, you know, they once campaigned for the Green Party or something. Yet a man who doesn't take climate change seriously, who voted to cut universal credit, who voted to strip people of their citizenship without warning, who voted to separate migrant children from their families, unaccompanied migrant children from families that they might have in the UK. Yet he is apparently so welcome. And it there's an argument to be made, obviously, that in order to win, Labour have to win over Tory voters um, in order to win an election and that this is a start. But this isn't a dyed-in-the-wool Tory seat that would have been particularly difficult to win back as a Labour Party with a real Labour Party person standing. You know, this seat was won by 400, by 400 votes. And in the next election, you don't have that powerful single issue of Brexit, which I think is really why a lot of these seats were lost to, to the Conservative Party. I don't think we will have this mass uh, re this mass sort of defection. I think that this is probably, it's not going to be much more than this one. Uh, but if you do, and in this case, accepting that, that defection, it means that Labour can't put someone progressive in that seat. They can't run someone that actually reflects what I hope are Labour values, even though that person could probably win in that seat. So now we're stuck with Barry South being represented by essentially a Conservative in, in Labour clothing. And also by, by doing this, by, by accepting with open arms in this way, you, you risk alienating your base coalition without whom you have no chance of winning an election. It's a non-starter. And, and last but not least, obviously, from a long-term moral and, and political standpoint, we, we don't win in a long-term sense, in a profound sense, by appearing at least to concede so significantly on some of these key 
issues by making it seem that you are welcome in the party if you hold all of these kinds of views. Because even if you get that short term win of an election, you still end up during your tenure in leadership, in government, you end up still laying the groundwork for future draconian governments to go even further than they, than they otherwise would have been able to. So a perfect example of this is we had three terms of a Blair, Blairite government, but that laid the groundwork for many of the really draconian parts of the conservative government. Things like hikes on t- tuition fees, things like the hostile environment, some of the things that we're struggling with the most. So so from a, from a bird's eye view, I think that we are on troublesome ground when we start saying, oh, like this is a party that that doesn't really have its own red lines. It doesn't have an ideological backbone. It's just a sort of catch-all dustbin for anyone who doesn't like the, the current Conservative Party. That's a risky strategy. And I think it also could end up playing into this sort of reputation that Starmer already has of essentially not really being driven by anything explicit, of not being driven by anything in terms of his principles or in terms of his ideology, but being basically driven by his desire to become prime minister. You know, that that's what I feel when I when I see this person's voting record and the open arms with which he has been welcomed. I think that, that the idea that, oh, this is a start to gaining back some people who voted Tory in the in the election, I don't think it's it's enough of a signifier of that to really make up for the fact that it represents a lot of other things that I think are quite toxic to to the Labour Party brand, as it were. I do think this is risky for Keir Starmer. And I think, you know, what's a real shame is that yes. Well, unless the CLP deselect this person, that there won't be a socialist candidate standing at the next election in this constituency. I think that how this helps Keir Starmer is just the bulletin that people will hear on the radio, which is Tory MP defects to Labour. Because m- most people don't follow politics that closely. They're not going to know what this guy's voted for. All they'll hear is Tory MP defects to Labour. And I think what that will sort of suggest to people is, oh, it's a normal thing to move from voting Tory party and being someone who fought, supports the Tory party to going and well, and voting for the Labour party. It's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a queue. It's a, a elite queue is what you call it. So it's someone at the, you know, the pinnacle of politics saying it's legitimate to go from Tories to Labour and given the Labour party need to win quite a lot of Tory voters at the next general election, especially in the kind of seat um, in which Wakeford is standing although not precisely that steep. We'll talk about that in detail. I think that could be significant. Um, when it comes to the Labour members of Bury South CLP, I think there is presumably a lot of ambivalence there. Bury South CLP, a place of distinctly mixed feelings tonight. One officer on the exec tells me, I want a Labour MP in Bury South, one that shows up to vote for children to be fed. Labour stepped up, Rashford stepped up, Wakeford did not. I suppose Keir Starmer would answer, but well, now... Now he will have to step up because he'll be whipped by the Labour Party. And if he doesn't vote with the Labour Party, we'll, we'll kick him out again. But some legitimate concerns there, very much so. Um, however, we can debate whether or not this was a good idea. Obviously, from the perspective of Wakeford, it's incredibly cynical. This is not motivated by a discovery of socialist principles, but rather that he was pretty certain that as a Tory in Bury South, he would soon lose his seat. Some context here. Wakeford's 2019 majority in Bury South was a paltry 400 votes. And the main reason he won in 2019 is because then MP Ivan Lewis, a staunch anti-Corbynite, was suspended from Labour following allegations of sexual harassment. He was accused of repeatedly touching the leg of a 19-year-old at at a Labour social event and inviting her back to his house afterwards. A year later, Lewis resigned from the Labour Party, citing concerns about anti-Semitism and Jeremy Corbyn's leadership and stood as an independent. However, in that election, instead of pursuing his own votes, Lewis encouraged his constituents to vote Tory. So in these circumstances, I feel I have no choice. But to say to you today, I want you to vote for the Conservative candidate, Christian Wakeford, in this election. I'm sure that many of you will do that with a very heavy heart. But the top priority for our community, all sections of our community in Bury South and the country, 
is to stop a Corbyn government that would wreak such havoc, havoc on the things that people most care about. So in this constituency, you had a former Labour MP who had, I mean, resigned in, well, the circumstances speak for themselves, don't they? He was accused of, of sexual harassment. He then resigned, citing anti-Semitism, and he's now telling the electorate to vote for the Tory. So even with all of those exceptional circumstances, the Conservatives only won by 400, right? So you can easily see how this constituency would go back to the Labour Party. And that is what current polling suggests. Um, so it seems as if, uh, according to projections from JL Partners, um, this is based on a poll of red wall seats. The Tories would go from winning the seat by 0.8% in 2019 to losing by almost 20 points if there were a general election held now. And what's interesting here is you might think that that polling would encourage Wakeford to take a chance to call a by-election and stand for his new party. But while he has previously co-sponsored a bill that would force a by-election for defectors, it's unclear whether Labour will call one now. That was a question put by Sheila Fogarty to a flustered shadow minister, Sarah Jones. Christian Wakefield himself co-sponsored a bill uh, mandating by-elections for MPs who change party affiliation. Are you gearing up for a by-election in Berry? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, who knows in terms of the time you, you seem to have elections every five minutes at the moment. I mean, the public are pretty fed up of them, I think, because we've, as an MP, only been in a few years. I've had three. Um, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. If I was a like politician's PR person, my, my first rule would be never, never awkward laugh. It never makes the situation less awkward than it otherwise would have been. It's a good question, though. Will there be a by-election? I think on principle, if someone defects to a different party, you should have a by-election. People voted in that constituency, unfortunately, for a Conservative MP, not a Labour one. So why would one not happen given the polling? Well, one risk is that if there were to be a by-election, there could be dirt which would be thrown at this former Conservative candidate. Manchester Young Conservatives tweeted this today. So they write, here's a photo from June the 13th of Wakeford at a house party straight from a Tory black tie in Manchester when large gatherings were still banned. He also drank so much tequila he chundered glass houses and that. Now, it's important to say Manchester Young Conservatives quickly deleted that tweet. That's potentially because it implicates them in breaking the rules at the time although we cannot confirm that. We, of course, also can't verify the date this photo was taken and therefore whether rules were broken. But the point stands that there are going to be a lot of people within the Conservative Party who have every interest of calling this guy a hypocrite, of saying that actually um, this person does have no right to stand up and say, I'm leaving the Conservative Party because I'm so outraged by all of these parties because maybe we can't confirm either way. Maybe people have evidence he was at some himself. That would obviously undermine any by-election campaign which was supposed to be fought on the grounds of, of the decency of the Labour Party and the, the scandals of the Conservatives. Um, Dahlia, what do you think about a by-election? Do you think Starmer should, should risk that and encourage this guy to, to put himself to the electorate? I think that this would be an important moment for him to stick by some form of principle. And it's not fair on those constituents for them to just be at the mercy of what is essentially an opportunistic uh, man in the form of Wakefield, that, you know, they voted in a particular way in the election and they deserve to have another say if their MP decides to dramatically change direction. And if it is the case that there is a lot of dirt on this on him, if there's, you know, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of risk in that sense, then Labour should have thought about that before they welcomed him with open arms in the way in the way that they did. So I don't think that there is, even though it is a risk for Labour, I don't think that there is a principled position that you could take that would explain not having a by-election. People being sick of elections certainly is a very weak source and very transparent uh, way of getting out of, of a difficult situation. And I don't think it helps Starmer's reputation for being kind of a little bit slimy and a little bit jammy. 